means every day they will punctuate. So they are doing punctuation on a daily basis. And they are reading large sentences which otherwise they are not reading, right? So there is a multiple this thing. Any other? Yes. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, good morning. Ma'am, it's mentioned over here we have to mark the phrases and clauses and say if the clauses are independent or dependent in the first week itself. Hmm. So, like, like a child of now, six standards. Clearly, they have not learned phrases. I introduced it, no? Yes. You can also introduce like this. The comfort for you is that you, I, if I know that I'm going to get them tomorrow and day after and day after and day after, then there's a weekend then I'm going to get them again and again and again. I, this is my class. I am very comfortable because I have introduced, I can introduce tomorrow, I will ask tomorrow, day after. Te let me tell you, 10 days they will all get it pit pat, including this boy. Means if I only the introduction has to be done in the first week like. Just do the introduction. You can't, you cannot, you cannot teach, teach and get every child to absorb everything in a day. Even if God came down, he wouldn't be able to do it. Same way the conditionals and adverbial phrases, everything in the first week. You can't do everything. What did I do? I stopped at clauses, no? Yeah. So ignore it. I have written there because I am writing a book that is in a continuum. When this grade one that is doing my grammar with these comes to you after six years, they will not need you for this book. That's the difference. But I cannot now write a dumbed down book and say, okay, after universal teachers are comfortable, I will write another book. I can't do that, no? I have to keep my continuum the way I would keep it if my one grade one is going up. So my scaling I will not move for you. Now if your children in grade 7 don't know nouns, it's a fault of the earlier system. I cannot corrupt this system to fit into the earlier failed system. So you have to judicially, judiciously decide what am I going to introduce and what am I going to keep aside. What you pella are learning here, dependent and independent clauses, your children will get after a few days. Then your baki ka hai, you will move it, move into that. So you go at your pace. I cannot decide your pace. But what I am telling you is even if you do half the book, you will do it brilliantly. You cannot say the same thing about what you are doing now. What you are doing now is a full flush out. Thank you ma'am. That's what I am saying. So if you are doing for example dependent clauses, the way I did phrases, have you guys ever done phrases like this? If you have, your children will do brilliantly. If you show it to them like this and if you tell them it is without a verb, if you just do phrases like this, then when the was is there, is, many people don't know that is and was is a verb. They don't know, children don't know. See they, are, they had trouble picking up the verb. Is this obviously not your class? Yeah, but what I am saying is, if they have trouble doing these kind of things, when I ask what is this, what is that, they need to be able to say. After this class, if you ask, if I did this for seven days and you ask this class, any question they will be able to answer. Now that is the success of a teacher, that I have done my job. But if they can't answer, means there is something in the system that has gone wrong. You guys have blindly followed some system that is not working. I am not blaming you personally. But you are following, you are endorsing something that's not working. That's a tragedy. And you are continuing to endorse because that's your comfort zone. You need to get out of it and say, this does not work, I'm going to throw it out of the window. I'm do something else that, that I'm guaranteeing will work. And you can see will work. This is only one day, day one this is. See? So when you teach phrases like this and you make them make phrases, they have to generate like I made them make, start with with, start with in, start with on, then the idea of the phrase becomes permanent. If you do uh, say this week we are going to do phrase, we got it for the exam, here are a set of sentences and then the next day you do adverb and then the next day you do something else, the next day you do something else. If you go like that, then it's all lost, 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 lost. So your kids, I guess, are getting full marks in grammar. So if you tell them to write an essay, hmm. See, phrases and clauses, if you don't get your basics, you won't be able to do the noun clause, adjective clause, adverbial clause. You'll have issues. If you can't do that, you will not get your simple compound complex, things like that. 
if you don't teach it like that, traditional grammar does not expect you to teach it like this. So if you've done it, you've done it on your own. Correct. But it's not the system. You have done something on your own creativity, which is good. But it's not the system. The system doesn't tell you to do that. The system tells you to do linear exercises that are that are you know particularly bound to, to this week adverb, next week demonstrative adjective, then third week something else, then something else. It's never layered. It's never looped back. It will not work. But if you have done it out of your own creativity and thought process, it will work because you have put a logic to it. So I don't doubt it at all. All when I say it, it, it is when I say something is not possible, I'm talking about possible, not possible in the system. If you had followed the book tic tac toe, hundred percent your children will not do it. I can guarantee you, they will not be able to do it because you followed a book, and the book is not structured to succeed. Its logic is all wrong. That's why your husbands will not know grammar. You ask, you go back and ask your husband, where's the preposition, where's the gerund, will they know? Hmm? Why? He also learned grammar for a long time. I'm sure he speaks brilliant English. Why doesn't he know his grammar? If I catch these guys and ask him grammar now, he'll run out of the building. He also learned grammar. We never question why. We are simply doing again whatever our great grandfathers did, we are continuing to do in the, in the name of tradition. Or saying that the parent will come and beat me, I am afraid, afraid of her, just let me do whatever she wants. These are not the reason. The child is the center. Keep that child. The child is not learning, it's a failed exercise. Okay? So, therefore, you need to loop it back. I was talking about something. What was it? Independent clauses and dependent clauses. If you do the same thing where you eliminate the dependent clause, okay? You tell me how you did it. Eliminate it? No, you just tell me how you did it. So that we can see what process you followed. I wrote a, sen I wrote a sentence. In that sentence, I just asked them uh, to read the first sentence and mark the subject and predicate. Hmm. And then, I asked them there are, uh, to mark the connecting word. Conjunction. We are going, I am asking how you teach in, uh, dependent clauses. Independent and dependent clauses. You want to see what the difference is. The meaning is clear itself. Correct. But when I am saying because I am late, then there will be many question marks. Yes, say ahead. Because you were late, what happened? Correct. So it's again dependent on some some support is needed to it. So that's the way so I. You are saying that when if I come and say because I am late, you ask me like the, I ask them what question would you ask? You are giving a fragment and saying does it stand on its own or not? Brilliant, excellent, and that's the way to do it. However, I am telling you to go one step ahead. I am saying get them to make as many independent clauses as possible with because. Yes. Because. Start. Because? Because I woke up. Because? Huh? The lady at the back? Because? Because, 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 because it was a holiday. What have we done? We have created dependent clauses. They are not standing on their own. Now let's do it with when. When? Start with when. When I woke up. Don't keep on waking up, please. Change it. When? The lady at the back. Huh? When I read the book. When I read school. 
when I leave school, when I went to the picnic, when I traveled, when, I'm, when it was raining, when, where, where? Where Dependent clauses with when. What does it show? Time. Because, what does it show? Reason. Where? 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 What are you doing? Dependent clause of? Place. What are they? They are all adverbial clauses. What are the adverbial clauses? Time, place, reason, manner. Manner. What is the conjunction for manner? In what manner? He ran. Neatly is an adverb. Conjunction for adverb. Manner. He ran in what manner? As if, as if he were running away from the fire, a fire or whatever, isn't it? There's an as if. So come on, with as if start as if, as if he or as if I, you can do anything. As if, as if he knew everything. As if he did not go there. As if. Madonna? Sir? As if I what? As if? As if? As if we want to mark, mark ourselves. Make. Milka Singh. As if he were Milka Singh. Okay. As if he were. As if? Okay, so that is gone. So we've all got manner. Do you understand what I'm doing? I am layering manner. I'm going back and asking you again and again what are the subordinate adverbial clauses. They're all adverb. They show time. This I will repeat. Get the children to repeat. I won't repeat anything. They will repeat it. How many times? You want to repeat? 40? 50? 80? 100? You've got 150 days. I can take your 10th standard if they don't know anything and do it in 50 days. Because the more mature they are, the faster they will get. So there is no question of them not getting grammar. If I do this, then I will instruct them. When they write their essays, I will say, I want subordinate adverbial clauses in your writing. Do my children know what to write? When they think conjunctions, because although as if they know how to make sentences, yes, I made them make it. After some time, if you tell me, although he was sick, I'll say that's a baby sentence. I'm sorry, I want a nice one. I will give you time to think and write your sentence. So that will be a writing exercise for me. So you will sit and write a very sophisticated sentence with although. Now let us assume she doesn't have a sophisticated sentence with although, but she's made an amazing sentence. Can she hear it? Is that learning? Yes. Do lots of oral grammar. Demand rigor. And before you know, you can just instruct. All your children will write complex sentences. They'll be brilliant. You get them to pick out complex sentences from their literature book. That's also another one, no? Pick out uh, complex sentences from the newspaper, from the economist. You can build rigor to any level you want. The, the really brilliant ones, why should you make them sit with the newspaper? Chicken, it's a uh, uh, cakewalk for them. You give them the economist. Come on, from that you take out. Analyze those big, big sentences. That's a task I would give him. I wouldn't give him what I give everybody else. You don't differ do differentiate like this, then you will have a class which is bound to that exercise number 34 on page 62. Which you all of you will take faithfully home and... No, I've always felt we don't cater to the above intelligence too. No, you don't. But you just need to up that there is rigor in the, in the world. It's not that there is no rigor in the world. But if you are all going to do some, uh, exercise number 34, you can't get the rigor. Because that exercise is no rigor. Most of the books are being written to dumb down everything and make it very easy so that the tuition teacher who is not even a teacher can attack it. 
isn't it and the book sellers can sell their books and uh, commercially make a lot of money that's what it's about there's no greater logic behind it or greater intention to improve the child does not exist and then of course everybody buys into it the teach unfortunately the teachers also buy into it that's a tragedy you can understand parents they're looking at convenience but i expect teachers to have a lot more ambition for their children than they don't so i am happy at universal we are doing this and but if you don't do it every day it won't happen okay if you do one day and then you let it go and then you do another if you go it won't happen and if you are doing it it will show in the way in which your children right you cannot say i am doing amazing things somewhere and then i find essays from your class that are flawed then you are there is something you are not completing is something wrong the proof of the pudding is in the eating after doing all the song and dance the children write badly i can't say the system is good but i'm saying they will write because i'll make them write i'm training them to write even as i'm doing grammar so grammar is good their writing is good their spoken language should get better if you look at your uh, books i've given you what is called an oral uh, pair work right the oral pair work is typically so that they get fluency a lot of children have never used the words you yourself have never used structures so it's good for you also to start using it see if you are a person who is not fluent who is not using more sophisticated structures please do it yourself in the at home say it many times the more times you say it the tongue will move faster around those words and they'll become your own otherwise you'll constantly be sitting with some very very simple structures of english and then the children have no other role model but you so create a space for your own learning with these books any other doubts on that every day we are doing one sentence okay my students they have familiarized with new words they are happy with that their exercise they are enjoying but my question is in notebook every day that sentence has to go with this one this one sentence see this sentence will eventually come go to them in a book this book is for them uh -huh. i am getting it it's getting made it's in the making yeah what i have done is i have given you 10 weeks and as i was telling your principals in the meeting you all are not going to finish it in 10 weeks because you got a lot of backlog to catch up yes so i suspect you will even if i give the books to the children you will still be you know doing your first exercises for a little while so i don't think that i don't want to finish those books in a tearing hurry and not give you a complete package so i really want to do it well because i don't want to go back and visit it over and over again so they will have the books now the they the write time they write only one sentence in their book they don't write all the five no one day one sentence one they are writing they write that one sentence you are putting on the board any way because how will you parse it otherwise yes so you can even write that sentence the previous day and go that's what i would do i wouldn't waste time keeping my class waiting and writing the sentence on the board previous day before you go home put the sentence on the board so when they come into the classroom and be sitting there let it sit there doesn't matter hmm. even if they solve it before you come it doesn't matter see so the instructions orally we will be giving that punctuate so and that the magnificent alien i come huh. into class and i say that oh this is not punctuated come on who's going to punctuate it stand up and punctuate it so he'll say miss first uh, first letter capital full stop that will come automatically yeah. but there might be a semicolon or a dash or a conjunct or something for for they are doing they come each marks etc so they'll do that on a daily basis on that and on this sentence they'll do that mm. after that you ask them okay now i want this uh, uh, analyze this sentence so she'll start up and say the article uh, alien magnificent be adjective they'll do that Done. there'll Done. be some words that are New. missing that they might need help with for example children want to know what some is what any is mm. because you've done it as some uh, uncountable adjective or something somewhere way back in the fourth standard they are not going to remember what you did because see everywhere you've done it in pockets so you might have to do some bits of revision now another way to do it is if you feel that that is too time consuming you can change the sentence mm. so i wouldn't put the sum in any at all okay i just jettison it and keep my sentence in a place where it is manageable or i'll put just one item that is 
uh, one item of learning that's extra. Hmm. Not new learning, but old learning that they should have done but haven't done. Hmm. There's a difference. Don't call it new learning. It's what they should have done but they did not do. That's very different from the new learning that I've given you in the book, which is the real learning that needs to happen in the seventh or eighth standard. So you can do that and then they'll write it down in their book. How long will seventh standard take to write the content? So that's the way the notebook should be. Like if a uh, child's parent is looking into the notebook. See, what we not. decided last time was that you get them to write the sentences and if you like, at the weekend, make them do the same sentences. So it's a record in the book and it's a practice. That week, this is a weekend home task. No? Okay. That you can put it in the form of strips or whatever and give it to them. Xerox it and give it to them. No, now the second question is in huh. the index, the day's work, we write. So, what will we name it, title, like? Right, one, week, week one grab. Week one. <laughs> home task one. Week one. Just call it week one. See, the pa parent also opening it will be able to see, he is naming yes, everything. Sure, sure. They'll be able to see there's an exercise in preposition and the weekend home tasks. There'll be an X amount of learning. Now that phrase that, that I taught them on the third day, I can make them write in their books, in their own words. The phrase is a group of words without a verb. They'll all write. Because it's part of their, their psyche now. It's not a definition that is being given, given to them in the form of a totally new and strange Set. That's why that boy, one boy stood up and gave me some uh, random definitions when I asked him. Huh? Clause. Huh? He said something, it makes sense. He, he, it poor thing, he just went, see how badly they have been, uh, what shall we say, tortured into the definition process. I feel so sad. Because half of them, there's another boy who used the word specify. And I was asking. He used the word spell. It's clearly from some book where he's mugged it. Now you guys have given them rewards for this mugging. <laughs> clearly, otherwise they wouldn't be, you know, holding on to that word for so long. So you need to stop all that. They need to come to get down. You know, a grammar, if you don't simplify it, things like group of words without a verb, you don't say it. If you say subject, predicate, some people say group of words, with or this and not that. Don't don't elaborate. Keep it very simple. Wherever you see a set of verbs without a verb, it's a phrase. Don't make it complicated. Now you might find a Google dictionary or a you know other grammar book from somewhere that says no, you have to put subject. You don't have to become a slave. My this thing is I'm not going to put subject. What are you going to do? You know, who, who decides? As long as it works, it's good. For me, this works very well. My children don't have to remember so many things. Nito subject, predicate, it's just a killer, the definitions. Then because then half the children don't know what a subject is. Then you are you're defining that for them. And after some time they are like, oh dear, this is not something that I can do. You will give up. Huh. One more thing, in the question paper, English language question paper, we are having assessments which are coming up. The set of questions will be do as directed. Now your question paper, you can make it as hard as you want. Look at my, you know when I gave a question paper, I did this in a grade 10, 8 class as intervention. I went there for 24 weeks and just did grammar for them. The children, when I went in there in the diagnostic, they couldn't underline the verbs. Like if you say has been taken, they would only underline taken or has. They had, they were that defective. We reached a place where I, the final uh, test paper that they had said that you have to write a paragraph and you have to begin it with either a participle or a gerund. Your paragraph must contain an infinitive and you must have at least one simile. It was just, this was the instruction for, this was the grammar paper. So you had to generate everything. I'm not, it goes one, uh, you know, you've got recall and you've got, uh, Recognition, uh, recognition is the easiest, isn't it? You recognize something. I've given you the adjective and you're saying adjective. Recall is where you have to think of what is this word called and write adjective. And generation is your highest. That you have to have full knowledge. That is what, that was their grammar paper. 
they said to me, not doing, you're not doing written work. And I, said, I gave them the paper. I said, you go and find out how many schools give you a paper like this. Kids did it. I had 60% of that class who did it well. 40 didn't. But I'm like saying, there is the ninth standard. We've got this other booth where we say, everything has to be done now. 100% of the kids must succeed, otherwise you fail. So these are problems we have. There's another here. There are some children who will take time to get there. But you can give them the hardest paper you want. Instructions. But if you want to change it to your CDSC or whatever pattern, you do that also. It will be a breeze, like all your children sentence, will jump o over one it One sentence, one, uh, one instruction, do as directed or a bank of instructions. Now if you, if, if your child is parsing a thing like magnificent angel uh, avenging crusader thing kind of thing and you write, the girl went to the shop, the pretty girl went to the shop, mark the adjective. Will be a <laughs> what, what shall we call it? Or start with although they'll do it. That is also there. There's a lot of that in the in grade eight and seven. Start with this. Start with that. The in the grammatical constructs. So you can do that also. You can do more than one. It's so boring to do one, no? I would see till the eighth standard there you don't have to follow any big board. You can make it as rigorous as you want. After that, in the ninth and tenth, you just need to tell them what the board needs. Their ninth standard children are smart enough to know that if I do this, I'll get marks. So they're not going to, you know, add their own two instructions if they have given them one. They'll do the one and they'll get out. But the fact remains that till the eighth standard, you have created a child who is competent. And that's what schools must do, because nobody is going to ask you which board you came from when you go for a job or an, uh, an interview. They may ask you in a college, but that's all, that's where it stops, see. And just because you got a degree from that college doesn't automatically mean you're a su successful person. So then it's all going to be, you know, it's all just the, the, the percentages uh, are important only for us teachers to make ourselves feel good. Or tuition classes, where they can put the chota chota pictures of hundreds of them and sell their shop, sweatshop. Any other? Was she the representative of the group? Empowering English? Give it to you. Even I can't hear what she's saying. She definitely need that mic. We were given this uh, teacher's uh, help Manual. guide, not the manual. This is a book. The yeah, book. No, no. These are just Xerox pages of the book. Oh, okay. Huh. And N's and O's were marked. So what had to be done in the notebook and what had to be done orally. Huh. Now in this one lesson, there was just this much. So, I mean, so what does this mean? Just that, that much has to be done in the notebook or? So you've got language, in empowering English you have language, you've got A, usage and meaning. We use the same word in different contexts to mean different things. That's no, no, my question is this, this marking given here, this and this. B says take one word each and guess no, the meaning from the no, context. No. You have N for notebook. I have given. I have not given this. Because I'm least concerned with whether you put it in a no. I want it in their head and in their life. You can put it anywhere you want. I will never give you N, O and all that. Please remember there are 40 words, there are 40 children in your class. Use them as resources. Give each child one word. Spend a little time in the class sharing those words. But don't make everyone do 40 words because they will sit till 3 o'clock at night and that's called abuse. So don't do that to your kids. Everything they can do for you together. They can do lots more than you can do as a teacher. So if you want to find meanings of things, you don't have to find, they'll find. Just give them one each, they'll find. Because they, we are living in the age of Google, where you do not need anybody. You just need the Google. 
So um, don't treat it like a 19th century classroom. Whether you, your notebooks, your, you need to demonstrate how to write answers, by the way. Children need to know how small answers and big answers, that is more important than how many small answers they write in their notebook. Because the poor things don't know how to write and nobody has shown them. People have only given them instructions, right? This is small, that is uh, question number 2, 3, 4, 8 in the notebook. You are most concerned about that because some parent is going to come and ask you where is the notebook. Then you are concerned about whether you corrected it or not. You are not concerned whether the child can write or not. That's what worries me. So if you want the kid to write a short answer, you have to start showing it on the board. No? So now let's all answer this question together. Okay, what are we going to write? You tell me, you tell me. Now when she tells me something, I can say, is this okay? What do you think? What do you think? It should all come from them. You don't give them any model Xerox answers, please. Let it come out of their heads. You will get several opportunities to correct grammar, vocabulary, usage when that happens. But for that, all that, your own language needs to be strong. So if it is not strong, I am telling you, take up a course. Go somewhere and get it up to scratch. You are an English teacher. You can't afford not to have in good English. If you are worried that my sentence will be wrong, then you can't teach. And that's the reason why a lot of people don't attempt it. Because they are not sure of themselves. See, they say, no, never mind, let's just stick with the book and some question answers which I can aram say, look at home and correct. And if I don't miss a line, I'll say, oh, I just missed that. That's lack of confidence. Please get into a class and get your English up and running and speak a lot. Read aloud a lot because the tongue is not moving on the words. Hmm? Uh, what are they? Tell me. How are articles adjectives? An apple. Is that an adjective? Can you put another adjective in its place? Golden rule. What did I tell you? One, one apple. One is an adjective, two is an adjective. So, a is, a is also an adjective. It's not in the part of speech, na? We teach articles separately. But that is also a part of speech. The parts of speech are only eight. Outside that there is nothing. So, where did this article come out from? Yeah, you ask the child, change it with an adjective, see if it's changing. Don't tell them anything, don't explain, don't explain, let them think. You give them these kind of hooks that an adjective can only be replaced by an adjective. This is my rule. After that, the kid has to think. He has to make all the substitutions and see whether it fits. He will come and tell you, hmm, yes, yes, it is. That's it, it is. I have just put it in. Otherwise, you normally treat it article, article as if it's some other planet. <laughs> All the parts of speech article. It is, it's an adjective. Yes. Ma'am, in the 9th and 10th standard and 8th standard, we have seen their reference to context read the following passage and then they have question answers. So for the sixth, we don't start with reference to context for the literature. You don't start or you are asking me should we start? We have question answers like in the formal the manual given. We have questions and answers to be done in the textbook, notebook. So nothing about the reference to context. So should we start? give. We can. You can, see you can give whatever you like. I am only interested in the skills of the child. So in a lesson, if you are going to look at keywords and supporting sentences, that's a skill. If you are going to summarize a passage in a lesson, that's a skill. If you are going to look at uh, beginnings and endings, that's a skill. If you are looking at irony, if you are looking at uh, how humor has been created, uh, if you can recognize those things, that's a skill. So I, want, I just want skills. Whether you do ask what question you ask or where, which book you write in is immaterial. If I come to your classroom in the sixth and if I say, tell me what's an irony, 
after children have done three or four lessons in Ayurveda and they cannot answer, then I would say there's a problem. No matter how many how many questions you've done and how many books. The bottom line is they should have a sense up here on a permanent basis of what they have done. Otherwise, it's not been done adequately. And if it's not been done, done adequately, it will get flushed out. The brain will say it's extra and throw it out. So that's, that's the most important thing. Now, how many, where you want to do is a matter of your technical, internal uh, you know, issues. But I would say don't burden the child and not more than 50% of your questions should be factual. 50% factual for all children to pass. These are also golden rules. You do not torture children and fail them by giving them a very hard paper. Every child has the right to pass, which means your core basic learning, which you have repeated 5-6 times, is what you will put in that 50%. 30% will be increasing levels of difficulty. And the last 20% will be so hard that only that one child in your class who is a genius can do it. Thank you, ma'am. Then you will not have 90% marks in your class. Then your parents will come and start shouting at the principal. You will have issues. But that's the true paper. Then only you will get a bell curve like this. Now there are no bell curves, no? 90% me pakadke, the curve is just sitting there up, it doesn't come down at all. Then, I think I should go home at one. Merchant of Venice, I told them the story, they read it, they enjoyed it with me. But the second time they told me, ma'am, we want the story. Yeah, naturally. So that I said, fine. With you. I want, I, I gave you them the story. You become the storyteller. Yeah. The bar. But then I didn't want to give them the whole story because I gave them the first part of it and said, we'll read it across and we'll check what happens. So I left it that way. But then, ma'am, I felt I didn't do it well because I wasn't aware of the the end of the story because it was just a small extract taken from one of the books. Which are you talking about? Uh, the gift pick. The gift pick. Yeah. Did you read the manual? Yeah. So did then, you, did you read the learning outcomes? Uh, yeah. Does it say anywhere tell, that tell the children the story? Uh, actually, no. No. It doesn't. Why did you do it? You, if you do your own thing, no, with empowering mm. English, then you all will go on your own trip. Ma'am, I didn't tell them the story. I you just did, told them. Told no, the I story. told them the first part, like it's about the king. And did, did, did yeah. the manual tell you say that? Uh, no. no. You're not following the man. You're not following the manual. So, ma'am, will you just guide me? Like, how can I follow go? Follow the manual. What does the manual say? You've got it. In your, are you an 8th standard or a 2nd standard teacher? You are telling stories to children. Where they should be telling stories in the 2nd standard, they are not telling. Ma'am, but then it becomes very difficult to get your attention. Because what, for Merchant of Venice? No, Merchant of Venice, they, they, they went, it went along very well because I told them uh, the synopsis of it. Like, you know, it happened like this. But Why then they can't read? They are in the eighth Ma'am, it's just a small part of it where only the quote scene happens. So then when they don't know what has happened before, uh, I thought I, they wouldn't be able to understand what exactly are they the... They can't Google. They can't find out. They are Googling for everything else. You can Google and get Shakespeare in, from one line to one paragraph. It's all there. Why would you? You are mollycoddling them. They will never be free of you. 
they should be your top ma'am i agree to it but let me tell you uh, from the class of 30 i think 10 of them are just not computer savvy because i told them to uh, as i said as you told i would worry about that yeah and it, i would make them computer savvy first because you cannot live in this world without being computer very savvy. true very true so i wouldn't tell them either way anyway i would say go and find out sit with this guy and learn how to do it there's no excuse there's absolutely no excuse that trust me you're not doing them a favor you're doing them a disfavor by going that in that direction do not do it they are in the eighth standard they can help themselves and if they can't help themselves let them fall we have this worry about children falling we have to catch them all the time and keep them in one one place let them fall they learn not to do it the next time you cannot tell them stories they should find out i'm sure they have the google on their phone most of them nowadays you don't even have to you know start a computer it's all they've all got it you want a bet those 10 children you bring them to me i'll show you how much they have it's an excuse and you are just pandering to that whole thing please follow the manual the manual will never tell you tell a story never do not tell because if you do this you will go on your own trip it's like grammar now i'm telling you to do it a particular way now if you say i'm going to teach the phrase differently i'm going to stand there and uh, give notes on the phrase then you cannot come back to this you can either do that or you can do this you can't be in the middle and do any kind of you give you have to give it your entire one year or fully for that and your children will show you how successful it is even if you do it badly it will show the children will do better it's like that that's the way the system is designed so if it tells if i have told you if i would have told what is that merchant of venice about it's about a theme it's not about merchant of venice what was the merchant of venice thing about it's about shakespeare right was it part of shakespeare no no but it's a, it's excerpt from uh, shakespeare because they are going to do shakespeare they you are you guys are not doing shakespeare but icse schools are doing shakespeare and cbse wants shakespeare that's why it's in the book now you can decide to drop it if you want completely if you're not doing shakespeare i don't mind but don't do it in a way in which it is like neither here nor there it's all over the place there's a particular poetry in that and if that is not that doesn't come across the loftiness of shakespeare doesn't come across to the child then you've done the child a disservice again you're telling him a story which is tell him to buy one adapt uh, adaptation you will get na no? you get chota chota shakespeare oh if you hear it he'll get it he doesn't need you <laughs> bottom line there are many avenues even if he's not computer savvy there are ways in which he can get uh, those chota versions of shakespeare and read the story you can get anywhere but what was your point tell me what did you ask i got caught up in admonishing you for not looking at the manual but you had a question yeah, which was even i have she forgot she got so worried about the way i went at her she got question went out of her mind she asked then i'll catch you all like this you're not looking at the manual i'll know otherwise i think everyone's doing it the right way and please finish that book from end to end do not leave anything when i say that i don't mean do it in detail so if you got let us say you got a big lesson left there are let's say eight pages and you have don't have more than two periods tell me what you do you got eight pages you got two periods will you drop the lesson do the lesson i am saying do the lesson how will you do it these are thing questions they should have asked you in your bed college then you would have come here with the answers and done the right thing so tell me how you do that lesson eight pages two periods are left what will you do na huh? comprehension you want children to read eight pages and do comprehension what will you do huh? discussion of questions what do we want to do two periods are got i can't do discussion there are like 15 questions behind and he is not they have not read it so they won't can't be they can't do the questions what will i do 
They have to read the story, no? They have not read the story. You tell them to read at home and come back. Okay? That could be one way. But if you are going to look at any lesson, please go to the learning outcomes table and check out what are the skills in that lesson. The skills in that lesson might not even be comprehension. The skills in that lesson might be looking at maybe the style of the writer. Maybe just talking about how he uh, or a character to show a character who is, uh, uh, is angry or corrupt. It could be just one thing that's important. So you take two or three important things. Let's say it's about a theme. Suppose you're doing a, a lesson called art theft. Nobody's got art theft, no? I think it's in grade 7. It's about how people steal Mona Lisa and big paintings and why do they steal it and it's that kind of thing. Now I have no time to do it. It's a hard lesson. There's pretty um, uh, good amount of vocabulary in it. My children are not very, uh, coming from very uh, in, uh, affluent families. They are middle class. They won't understand art, art theft and all that. What should I do? What is the most important thing in the manual I will check? One of the most important things in the manual is what are the various ways in which people store money? Why will I do that with them? Why is that important? Because it's a life skill. So they put money in banks. Where else do they put money? Come and tell me. I do this in the classroom. I'm basically treating you as a class because I don't have children. Tell me. You'll invest in what? Shares, then big ones you are missing. Antiques, okay. Property, land, isn't it? The big ones are these, then you think your children will enjoy this? If they are children of merchants, they thoroughly love it and they will know all of it also. They will tell you more. They will say, Miss, what about futures? Which you won't know. So you will have to say, what is futures? Tell me. So, gold, isn't it? You forgot gold, you are women. Then, and you will say there is one more. I am not going to open that book at all because I have got two periods. I can't do six pages. I am just going to have this conversation. The other thing is art. So we will talk about, there might be two children in my class who know something about it. I am going to give those children an opportunity to talk about art. So who knows about art here in this group? Nobody? <laughs> That's not possible. <laughs> Which is the most famous painting in the world? See, I, I, I will not tell you, I will question. Yes, probing questions. What is the most famous art? Mona Lisa. Any other? Huh? The Last Supper. So you give me two, three. Now if I am going to come prepared, if you got a smart board, I will flash those paintings on the board. Right? It is very easy to do. Take it off the net and flash it. Is that good education for my children? Yes, because if you don't know what the word Mona Lisa connected to that picture, you are quite illiterate. That's the way it is. You should know something. Then I'll say, who's a famous painter here? Who is it? India mein Da Vinci. Hussain. Emma Hussain is one of our most famous painters. And then they'll give you three, four more. They'll say Anjali Menon. They may or may not, but I have basically now established that paintings are very valuable. Have I done that? My this thing is about art theft. If they are very valuable, will a robber take it? Yes, he will. Is it easy to carry or hard to carry? It's hard to carry. He has to. But do is there a movie on it? Which movie? Huh? Thomas Crown Affair or there, there are other things that people have stolen. Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise ka. So those kind of things, if I Google, I'll find, I'll give them URL, so go and see the movie at home. So half the work is done at home, right? And then we will look at what are the, what is the essence of that lesson. And we'll talk about just that essence of the lesson and leave it. I will not leave a hole by not doing it because I don't have time. No, yeah, we'll just talk about it. Is it important, that lesson that I did? Is it good? The girl at the back, tell me why. You look doubtful. 
the lady in the pink at the back. Why was that an important lesson? Take the mic. I can't hear you. I am half deaf. In my old age. Oh, that's a different group. Doesn't matter. It's a common sense question. Answer. It's got nothing to do with 7th standard. I've just told you something. The answer now. Tell me. Why is it an important thing? Suppose you were my student. Would you think it's valuable and why? Because it was not only related to something about the book, something out of the book, something related to general knowledge as well. Correct. So you have gained a lot of general knowledge about investments. You have uh, gained some knowledge about art and artists and their value. You talked about how it is, how why people steal art and what happens to it. It gains in value. So if you look at some poor artist who really died and then you have look at the kind of money that it attracts now, then children are able to appreciate this. You can link it to exhibitions, then you have to ask them to look at two films, which is good, very exciting. Job two, year two uh, periods have been served very well. Instead of leaving it and saying, now let's revise for the exam. Which is what we do when there are two periods. We say, oh, we must revise, we must revise. Because our whole purpose is to hold those children and reach them somewhere and a slip. Back. Next class. Any other? They will, they will, exactly new words, new ideas. So even if it's this child coming out of some small house where he's not heard anything, you have given him something very, very unique. Yeah. Everything. You will also have given some children the feeling that he knows about Mona Lisa. I don't know. He might go and look it up. How does he know? Pure jealousy. Right? You, there are various things that will happen in your classroom because you did that. But if you tell them, Chalo, open your book and revise what will happen. <laughs> Tell me. It will all become... Oh. Again, revise. The mother in the house is saying, revise, revise, revise. The teacher is also saying, revise, revise, revise. See, it goes like that. So you actually wasted that 60 minute uh, window that you had of uh, stimulating the child. So now I made you all feel sober. <laughs> yes, you have learning outcomes for e for the book. For each lesson, yes. In the manual, I've sent it. Ask you. You don't have? It'll come say it must have been separately printed out then. Yeah, it's there, the learning outcome. Learning outcome is basically a table. It gives you the lesson, page number, activities that you do in that particular lesson, the skills that come out of it, and the genre. Yeah, this is the learning outcome. See, it's like a lesson plan. So it says the relevant American poet, page 150, and the activities are given here. And then the genre and the skills that come out of the activities. So the skills column is very important. To find out what are the skills. So if I am going to drop this, what am I missing is here. So I need to do it in some way quickly instead of leaving a hole. It look like that. Yeah. It depends on whether you are you guys have printed it as part of the manual, then you will get it as part of the manual. Otherwise, you will have to ask for it separately. Yes. Learning outcomes are? What happened? It will have come to your school. They must have not printed it. Ask other the Madonna is the lady to catch. She has everything. anything in that book that is going to be difficult to teach, you can show it to me. 
where you have looked at it and said, my God, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Have you had that feeling? Parent, child, adult, you know. So that I was wondering how to do, because there are some situations, you have given examples, but then you have also asked us to, you know, tell the children to write dialogues. Because so there they can come up with see, different things. See, I'll tell you. Transactional analysis is something that all of us do. It's not something meant for the older people. Children do transactional analysis in the playground. Whenever I talk to you, there's a transaction. Now, if you perceive me as talking down to you, then I'm playing the parent Parent. role. And you you are helpless, so you're a child role. Now, if you stand up and if you fight with me, then you are... I am playing the parent role, but you are standing and opposing me in the same parent role, there will be a conflict. So any fight that you have with your husband, for example, if you know transactional analysis, you can analyze and you can say, see, I played the child role and he wrapped me by saying, don't, don't disturb me when I am doing my work. You have gone there and say, what about those diamonds and he has out you like that, then gone into parent and child mode, there is a conflict. After that, you will sulk heavily. Now, you've gone into child mode again. Now, he'll come and he'll say, this is crazy. Why? How can you behave like this? Don't you understand? Adult role, the reason. He's not playing parent there. He's reasoning. But you are child. You've gone into sulk. So, you're not listening. So, you've got, an, you've got a fight. After some time, like Jia Khan, you might uh, jump out of the window or something like that. It <laughs> depends on... See, it will... Now, if young people understand transactional analysis, they will be able to see the problems. You will be able to see, I am going child, he is going adult, I am going parent, she is going... You will get... You will understand the... Uh, it's a very, very important lesson to teach. In my view, you cannot have young adults without this information. But well, that's men, But if you try it, they will tell you. They will understand it brilliantly. They will give you many examples. You won't be able to stop them. Trust me. <laughs> because they would have gone through this. They will say, Miss, with that day when I asked Rahul this, he said that he was being the child, I was being the adult. They will be able to tell you how it went. They will be able to analyze their own fights in the playground or the sociogram in their class where some people are not talking to one another or uh, some children are being mean to them. They will be able to see how the transaction is not on the same, same level. level or it's in, it's in different levels. It's a, I think it's an extremely important lesson for children to have. For all people to have, not just children. Everyone should have. That's why I believe it should be part of education. Uh, eighth is an amazing book. But you can do it in eight and nine and ten. You don't have to do all of it in eighth. It's not possible. It's an eight plus book. Persona? Persona enhancement in training Correct. Every person has a child, adult, and a parent. Correct. Everyone has. Everyone has. It is. Because, see that, it is at with which ego you are talking or you are receiving. Now, many of you can say that, yes, she is nearly 60 years old. She has a right to talk like this. Some of you might say, what nonsense, who does she think she is? Now, it all depends on how you are receiving it, no? Which ego you are putting up to to what I am saying. So, it's that. But if I recognize that large numbers of my audiences are putting up a particular ego, then I need to change my style. I can't say, this is how I am going to be and, you know, to hell, whatever. There are people who say that also. So, they never, they never move. And then they are unpopular, they don't have friends, they are have broken marriages, their children don't talk to them. So when you look at individuals like that, if you actually look at their transactions, you will be able to see why, why that's happening. And they can't imagine how their relationships are breaking. They don't know. It's the...